base, so the Oakland A's take take. We are having an earthquake. An earthquake of major proportions hits California from San Jose north to the Bay Area of San Francisco. A section of the Bay Bridge connecting Oakland and San Francisco collapses. Right here in San Francisco Bay, we're in one of the most active seismic regions in the world. It's literally cradled between the San Andreas and the Hayward Faults. Both of them active, both of them have um, been very devastating to the local community in the past. In 1989, a couple of spans at E9 actually collapsed. There were other parts of the bridge that were damaged. Uh, after careful consideration by community, by technical experts, it was decided to actually replace the structure. In general, building a bridge anywhere in, in the country, you, you build it for at least a um, at least a 75-year lifespan, and so that in an earthquake or other natural disaster, it doesn't fall down. Um, we needed something a little bit more than that, given the, the environment that we're in. So what we did is we created a new criteria called Lifeline, where we actually built this bridge to stand up uh, for double the lifespan, 150 years. Not only would the bridge not fall down after a major earthquake, but it would be immediately reusable for emergency service vehicles. And then, without having to rebuild the bridge, we could put the bridge back into public service. One of the key components of this project has been collaboration. And America Bridge and Floor have absolutely worked in a spirit of partnership. It's really a true joint venture. It's a true collaborative effort. But it goes farther than that. They have to understand the currency of their client. And we have a complex currency. There's three agencies that are overseeing this project. California Department of Transportation, the California Transportation Commission, as well as the Bay Area Toll Authority. So that's not easy and it's not very typical. Nowhere else has anything of this nature, this size, this magnitude been done. And especially in an active seismic zone such as San Francisco. Normal suspension bridge, you have two parallel cables. You hang the cable, you drop your suspenders, you pick up your deck sections, and you have a bridge. In this case, we have one cable, a mile long, that anchors upon itself and supports the bridge. So what you've had to do is build a temporary bridge to build the permanent bridge. The unique thing about a self-anchored suspension bridge is that it is anchored from within the bridge itself. That means not outside on a piece of land. And instead of building the tower and the cable first and then hang the deck on the cables, you build a bridge to support the bridge decks then build the tower and then build the cable. Orthotropic box girder bridges are very difficult to build and this one's up, but they've been done before. Towers, steel towers are difficult to build, but it's been done before. But the cable system that's being built right here and is going up right now, it's been done no place in the world. It is drawn from the east side. Each strand is about a mile long. The forward span is 385 meters. The back span's 180 meters but the cables are continuous around the west end. They're brought up from the east side all the way up to the tower, brought all the way down to the west side, wrapped around the west end, then brought back up to the tower, and then brought back down to the east end on the other side to connect. That's done with 127 wires per strand, and there's 137 strands in the whole cable. The steel deck is actually broken up into 14 pieces on the eastbound and 14 pieces on the westbound. Our, our workhorse has been the uh, floating crane called the Left Coast Lifter to lift those sections off the ship and onto the false work. Floor's experience in global procurement has really helped us out. We have sourced materials from all over the world. We've uh, bought materials in, in Asia, in Europe, in the United States. There's so many different pieces to this bridge and they are shipped from all over the world. The Bay Bridge project is often referred to as a world-class project. It's on the world stage and, uh, you know, in fact, it took the world to build it. Numerous different countries, 30 states throughout the U.S. And it takes a company like Floor, working with American Bridge, to know the lay of the land, to know how that works. Floor brings to the project our mega project experience. It brings to it our projects, our, our policies, our procedures. Just the logistics of a project of this magnitude 
of the design done in the United States, the shop drawings being done in Vancouver, Canada, fabrication being done in China, then the logistics of shipping that steel, bringing it into the port here, unloading it, setting it. One thing you typically see on large projects, and especially on mega projects, you don't stay on those schedules. You try and maintain those schedules as closely as you can, but over a, a five, six, seven year period, the odds of staying on schedule are not great. We have the incredible uh, good fortune, and again, I think it's the result of the team effort that's been involved in the main span contract, that we are actually ahead of that schedule. To be in that position with respect to schedule, I think, is just tremendously remarkable. It does mean a lot to be able to provide something to the public that helps make the public more safe. This will save lives. I think for years and years to come, hundreds, 150 years, probably beyond that, people from all over the world are going to come and visit this bridge. They're going to ride their bikes on it, they're going to walk, they're going to see it up close, they're going to go to a museum and learn how it was put together. And I think Floor should be very, very proud of their involvement in this project and um, know that they are leaving a, a legacy here for people of the Bay Area, for the people of the greater region, the state of California, and indeed the entire world.